Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Nana from TheAlignLover.com. In today's video, I will be discussing John Hamm's body type and his style in terms of Kibi inspired suggestions. I believe that he is a dramatic classic. So if you are interested in styling for men, particularly if you have a body type or vibe that is very similar to John Hamm, please stay tuned for this video. Before we get into the outfits, let's just briefly discuss John's actual body, his silhouette, what are his main attributes, what dominates his physique. So he is mostly balanced. That means he's quite moderate. He's not super tall and narrow and sleek, nor is he very wide and blunt and brawny, but he isn't very small and petite and compact either. He's kind of in the middle between yin and yang, or rather moderate in terms of those yin and yang extremes. But he does have a yang undercurrent, which manifests as a little bit more of an elongation through his limbs, a bit more of a taut look to his flesh and musculature, and a bit more of a bold, striking, more defined look to his face, a little bit more angular. If the female dramatic classic is called the Taylor Chic ID, then I think tailored suave is a good kind of way to describe the men's dramatic classic style and John Hamm's vibe. Speaking of vibe, here are a few photos that I think really help capture the most potent or strong expression of the dramatic classic in terms of you know having it manifest through John Hamm and I wanted to include a spectrum of him looking a bit more serious and him smiling just so that I can really hone in on the idea that just because you have a certain vibe doesn't mean you're stuck in a certain emotional state um, for example all romantics are not always head in the clouds and just dreaming all day and dramatics are not pioneering all day super serious and just extremely focused all day there's every single state available it, this is really just about style and kind of the flavor through which you um, kind of pepper all of your expressions so here on the left you'll see john ham in a suit i didn't want to include too many suits in this video because the dramatic classic man is so obviously made for suits even more so i believe than the dramatic man who needs a particular kind of suit so that he can maintain a sense of length and narrowness and sleekness the dramatic classic man can get away with a wider range of suits because they really celebrate his moderate physique they don't have to be too sleek they don't have to be um, too blended on top and bottom because they have a wider range um, in terms of just emphasizing his moderate cuts and corners and contours and twists and turns here in the middle is a photo i think that shows a more sensual side of the dramatic classic but it is different from the soft classic like Jude Law please see my previous video for more on that the soft classic has more of a romantic soft sensuous kind of vibe whereas dramatic classics and John have a more penetrating kind of vibe it's more young it's less magnetic and receptive and more radiating and penetrative and lastly here is a photo of john smiling and i think this is a good kind of study on charm versus charisma so charisma is more of a yang trait especially if you're just thinking of the kibi system or many yin yang systems charisma is a yang trait because it's an outgoing extroverted radiating almost penetrative kind of um, influence on your environment where you can really exert your will and people will want to do what you desire. 
On the other hand, the more yin counterpart of charisma is charm. Charm is more of a hypnotic and receptive soft skill. When you meet a charming person, you are very magnetized by them. You want to give them things. You want to show them things. You want to lead them. And um, it's kind of getting sucked into their their energy field, their attraction, their, their charm. Another way to describe it in terms of yin and yang is that charisma, the more yang force, makes someone enjoy being the more passive force and the more yin and receptive force which is charm makes someone enjoy being the more active force and here i think looking at his smile you can see he radiates a lot of that charisma and that leadership and that drive and that influence Okay, I know that was a lot of talk on vibe and some abstract concepts, but I think that's the most fascinating part of this entire system, and it's really important to contemplate if you want to get the most out of it, especially if you really want to match your external appearance with your internal kind of patterns. But now let's move on to some outfits, and the first outfit that I want to describe or the first kind of pattern is keeping it clean. So dramatic classics, like other classics, look the best when they are polished, tidied up, and their clothing or ensembles really bring the eye inwards towards their center line because they're so balanced and symmetrical, just bringing the eye in so that you can really see all of their symmetry. So that requires more form-fitting, sleek, kinds of items that are symmetrical and have crisp edges that keep their shape against the body which you can see here on the left now on the right we have more relaxed unconstructed kinds of outfits that are not as clear in shape that don't hold their shape as much and you can see that the edges of the outfit kind of expand outwards, draw the eye outwards, and you're not being influenced or instructed to capture all of his symmetry. He looks obstructed or obscured by these kind of more diffuse items. Here is another little set of outfits, and I titled it Up for Country Club over sporty or athleisure-inspired outfits. And what I mean by that is if you are going to dress in a sort of casual way, imagine that you're dressing up for an elegant country club. You can still dress in a very comfortable way, but there has to be a little bit more of a polished, kind of older fashioned or more traditional look, like with chinos, cardigans, very elegant leather sneakers and one tone polos or collared shirts and button-ups. In contrast, the more modern, casual, more kind of youthful, fresh looks that are created by wearing a lot of sporty athletic wear like bomber jackets or hoodies or more casual, less detailed, less trim kinds of sports outerwear, track suits, or very different colored materials and fabrics on top and bottom and on the shoes as well, um, that tends to create a bit of visual clutter on the dramatic classic. The ensemble never looks quite polished enough. It doesn't look like it comes together super naturally on them. It just looks very separate because the style of this more hip clothing is just so separate from their more classic and traditional appearance. Moving on, here are some more outfits featuring tight versus non-tight ensembles. And when I say keep it tight, I mean keep it clean, keep it contained, keep it within a certain range in terms of volumes from the body and don't let your items really expand outwards too much and create 
these blocky or very round hunched over looks because the dramatic classic has a moderate frame they don't have the broad shoulders of say soft naturals or flamboyant naturals that can support these more unconstructed or bulky or round edged kinds of jackets they get lost in them so to really embrace a more moderate frame go for something that again will stay a little close to the body has some kind of tailoring to it has details that add more visual weight inwards closer to the body not outwards maybe some stand-up collars um, maybe some pockets closer to the center line maybe buttons that really catch the eye and just keeping the color range quite decisive and more simple another super important factor probably one of the most important factors in dressing anybody is color and i know i haven't been talking about color too much but i'm going to change that i'll do more color videos but color cues super important if you're wearing all the right items but the colors are not really resonating with your natural shading you're still going to look off something's not going to look right it's not going to look integrated so without getting into any overly specific color typings we can easily see that john has very dark hair very dark eyebrows semi dark or striking eyes he has lighter skin compared to his hair and there's just this sense of depth to his coloring there's no, nothing really diffuse or gray or faded or muted about any of his colors so he looks best in shades that mimic or mirror or reflect that kind of saturated quality like on the left oppositely when he wears more faded soft muted colors and patterns that are just not as crisp because when you have very high contrast between your hair and your eyebrows um usually you'll have features that really stand out in a more striking crisp way so patterns that mimic that are also good so on the right he is wearing the total opposite of what he possesses and he looks a little washed out now let's briefly talk about hairstyles because john ham looks like a different person with a beard no beard and different kinds of hairstyles so i think he looks good when he has a beard and mustache i think that's when he looks the best but he also looks pretty good clean shaven too as long as his hair is kept moderately sleek and well distributed now on the bottom his hair is a little bit exaggerated you have this very tight contoured curve on top and the very sleek sides so that doesn't look well distributed and then it makes the um, top of his head look a lot more broad and tall and vast and it makes his face look longer and that's not the best for any of the classics because they have such a balanced face that anything imbalanced is super amplified going off on that note the same thing applies to hats and eyeglasses so on the top john looks really great in these slightly larger square kinds of frames with a moderate to slightly bolder frame width and these fun pops of decisive color and here on the bottom left this kind of hat that is big enough to really cover the whole width of his face is much more accommodating and flattering than this hat here that again has the same kind of effect as the shorter hairstyle it makes his face look longer than it is it exaggerates the length of his face and these eyeglasses also do the same they're just shorter and smaller so they make the lower half of his face look longer and again that just disturbs his balance and lastly i always like to finish these men's videos with a few comparisons especially in terms of casting what kinds of roles that 
um, these actors are usually cast in. So we'll start here with Mr. Don Draper and uh, I think this soft classic John Slattery. I have not watched Mad Men and watched a few episodes, but from what I've seen, Don Draper is the perfect role for the dramatic classic John Hamm. And just looking at their two vibes, you can see that John Slattery is just a bit more rounded, a little bit more soft. He just has more of that receptive, romantic look to his features. He's not as angular, but he's still super balanced. Now moving on, we have John Hamm next to Matthew McConaughey, who I think is a soft dramatic, and you can really see how balanced and moderate John Hamm's face is next to Matthew. Matthew has much more exaggerated features, much more lush and longer angular bone structure with more lush features, larger eyes, more fleshy nose, a more rounded jawline. Moving up from there, here is John Hamm in between Bradley Cooper, who I think is a flamboyant natural because if you look at Matthew, I'm sorry, Bradley Cooper, especially his body, he's quite wide and broad and his features and his face um, possess this expansive kind of open quality to it. And next to Bradley Cooper, John, again, looks very, very moderate, much more balanced, much more contained in his features. And here he is also next to Tom Ford. It's really hard to compare him to Tom Ford because Tom Ford, um, I think he's had a lot of Botox. So I don't know what his face actually looks like. All I know is Tom Ford is around the same height. I think he's six feet tall, I think. John Hamm is six foot one inches tall, um, but John just looks so much more moderate and balanced again with that extra dose of, I guess, linearity or angularity of Yang, whereas Tom looks quite rounded and a little bit more sharp. If I had to guess, it's hard to find pictures of him. I would guess that Tom Ford is some soft, dramatic, kind of like in the same way you could see Keanu Reeves being a soft dramatic. And lastly, here is John Hamm next to Rami Malek, who I think is a flamboyant gamine. You can really see how exaggerated Rami looks next to the very moderate John Hamm. Rami's face, his features, his body, they just look a little bit more potent in terms of yin and yang. Everything is emphasized, it's exaggerated to the nth degree, and then John just looks, again, contained, restrained, symmetrical, and balanced. So looking at all these comparisons um, and looking at him next to all these different actors, I would definitely say that the cunning businessman or very classic old Hollywood kind of um, leading man role would definitely naturally fall to John Hamm. Um, he wouldn't play a eccentric romantic like Matthew McConaughey loves to play, um, whatever Bradley Cooper's roles are, like, um, cowboy singer in that one movie with Lady Gaga. I couldn't see John Hamm doing that. Um, and Rami Malek is Freddie Mercury, a Bond villain. John Hamm looks more like he works in the Bond office, or maybe is a very sleek, heroic, more traditional kind of villain or henchman. So that is it for my video. I know I did cover mostly more casual looks because again, the suit or more dressy looks are just quite easy on the dramatic classic. So. Um, perhaps I'll do another round of these and I'll do more suits, but I hope the casual outfits are a little bit more helpful and accessible. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.